Why has my, the center where I work implemented universal cervical link screening and asymptomatic pregnant individuals or those who are low risk? Let me show you. A patient came in for a routine anatomy scan, no symptoms, no complications, nothing. And the first thing we do, because we do universal cervical link screening when these patients come in for their anatomy scans, was do a transabdominal view of the cervix. And this is what we saw. Down here is the lower urinary segment. This right here is the internal cervical opening. And then down through here is the cervix. And you can see that something does not look right. What you're seeing is the bag of water or amniotic sac bulging through the internal opening of the cervix and into the cervix. That is cervical insufficiency. So to confirm, we did a transvaginal cervical length a screen um, to look, to get a better look. And right here, down here is going to be the fetal part. Again, this is the internal cervical opening, the funneling of the membranes through the cervix. And it appears that the external opening of the cervix is dilated with the bag of water right through or right at the external opening of the cervix. Now, as another example, this is the cervix. Up here is the uterus with the baby inside. This opening of the cervix right here is called the internal opening of the cervix. It's the opening of the cervix closest to the presenting fetal part. This opening down here would be the external opening of the cervix. That's the opening of the cervix where if we put the fingers into the vagina to check the cervix, that's what we hit first. So when we do a cervical exam, we assess the dilation of the external opening of the cervix as well as the internal opening of the cervix. So what you see is maybe up here with amniotic sac, the amniotic sac, amniotic sac has gone through the internal opening of the cervix through the cervix and is right at the external opening of the cervix or maybe even through it. Now, the next step for evaluation of this patient would be a speculum exam to look at the external opening of the cervix because again, that's the opening of the cervix closest to the vagina. We can look um, with the speculum in place and see if that bag of water is indeed coming through that external opening. If it is, the patient will be counseled about the risk and benefits of getting a cerclage or a stitch placed in that cervix. If the cervix, external opening of the cervix is closed, another option could be vaginal uh, progesterone suppositories. Now, there is no mandate by ACOG or SMFM for universal uh, screening of cervical links in asymptomatic pregnant individuals or those who are low risk. But for centers who do do them, they are recommended between 16 and 24 weeks of pregnancy. And there are strict guidelines and criteria that must be met in order to measure that cervical length transvaginally. And every individual who does these cervical length assessments should pass certain testing to make sure they are doing it appropriately. If wherever you're getting your ultrasound does not do them or they don't have the proper training to do them, don't have them do it. You could potentially request that you be sent somewhere that does have the proper training and it does do this, the universal cervical length screening. Were you offered cervical link screening at your anatomy scan or between 16 and 24 weeks of gestation? Tell me about it in the comments.